A lot of people think arguing online is a waste of time. At its worst, it can be really vitriolic and really bad for your mental and emotional health. And even when it's not that bad, a lot of times it feels like you're just talking in circles, nobody's listening, like you're screaming into the wind. But it's not always like that. I think that there can be some major advantages to debating things online. When done correctly, it can mean that you get to understand your opposition's perspective a lot better. Even if you don't agree with them, hopefully you can at least articulate where they're coming from in a way that they would say, yes, that is what I think. It also can push you to build out your position much more clearly. It can help you find flaws or weaknesses in your reasoning and find a way to either improve them or let them go. If you're like me, then debate might inspire you to research and you can end up finding a lot more resources and information and ideas you didn't have before. And you can change people's minds. But the issue is, and this is a very crucial distinction, it's not usually the people who you're arguing with who end up changing their minds. I mean, you might. It's happened. But most of the time, the person you're arguing with is not actually the target audience. The target audience is all the people silently reading or listening to the discussion. I've had people privately contact me to let me know that I've changed their minds on abortion, and I've never directly spoken to them about that before. And I don't mean just through my role as executive director of Secular Pro-Life, I also mean in my private life. Typically, they were reading my online arguments with other people, and I brought up points that intrigued them, and that was what began their reflection. If you think of your online discussions primarily in terms of silent observers, it should change the way that you debate. First and foremost, you should try really hard to never be a jerk. I am not saying I'm always good at that. I'm just saying we should strive to do it. Think of yourself as an ambassador for your position. And the silent observers are watching not just the content of what you're saying, but how you are saying it and how you are treating other people. This doesn't mean you always have to be really kind and sweet, but it should mean that you aren't overtly rude or juvenile or aggressive. Just go for calm and factual. And keeping silent observers in mind should change who you engage with when. Specifically, there's no point in going into a hundred plus long comment thread. Fewer and fewer people are going to keep reading the longer a conversation goes on, which means the biggest utility is in the first few comments, and it decreases after that. Now, if the person you are talking to directly is interesting or engaging or thought-provoking or offering some other kind of value to the conversation, keep going as long as you want. But if they are generally being really rude or aggressive or their arguments just aren't that inspiring, feel liberated to peace out after it's been a while. If you want to maximize utility for the amount of time you put in, you can also try what I call the hit-and-run comments. This is when you see some kind of public post that has overwhelmingly or uniformly pro-choice content, and you just post one comment where you give a pro-life perspective, maybe with a link to a citation, and then mute the notifications and leave. Maybe your comment gets dogpiled, maybe it doesn't, but at least you put an alternative perspective out there for anyone who's skimming, and it should have only taken you a minute. Over the years, arguing online has given me an enormous amount of knowledge and resources and connections. It's not for everyone, but if you have the disposition for it, I highly recommend it.